Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open them up. Uh, we've been talking about the process of discipleship, really trying to help people to understand the concept of what discipleship really is. Um, a lot of, sadly, sadly speaking, a lot of times people go to church and, and they think that discipleship is a, a curriculum or, or some sort of books or some sort of uh, study that they go through. And, and if you kind of lean towards that, you've really missed the concept of what discipleship really is. And um, discipleship, we have plenty of biblical principles in, in the Word of God on what discipleship really is. And uh, one of the ones we have been looking at is over in Thessalonians, if you would turn over there, First Thessalonians chapter 2, and really looking at the process of discipleship, and when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, the life of Moses, and we see certain characters in the Word of God, the Apostle Paul, that were involved in what we would call true biblical discipleship, you're going to see something that is very unique. There was, um, we're going to look at this in an Old Testament principle in a few moments, but um, you're going to see something that's very unique. It's the impartation of one's life into the life of somebody else. That's what discipleship really is. It's going through the stuff with them. It, it, it's, it's building a bond. It's building a relationship with somebody that will last for literally for eternity. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, really don't understand the real process of discipleship. But when you really understand it and you've walked through it, the people that you have discipled will become the closest people in your life. Those people, sadly to say, they'll be closer than your own biological family members. They really will. And the bond that, that, that is formed there, the relationship that is formed there, it's formed on the Word of God, it's formed on the souls and the hearts and the lives of people where the Spirit of God just does something ast literally astronomical in weaving people's lives together. And God does that in so many different ways. So we've been talking about this, so to really to help, try to help you to understand so you can take that next step of really following this process of discipleship, you know, and getting out there, winning somebody to the Lord, bringing somebody to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and then giving them the impartation of your life into their life and watching the Spirit of God move, watching the Spirit of God do something in their hearts and in their lives. And so when we begin to understand real discipleship, we really see it for what it really is. We see and understand that it's taking your life and investing your life into the life of someone else. Now, there's multiple aspects to this because you can just you can invest your life in a young child's life and help see them grow. It can be it can be anyone around you, but there has to be some sort of impartation of life in you. Now, once again, if you don't have it in you to give out, you can't necessarily give it out. So you have to have something before you can give it out, right? right. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ that is so engulfed in your soul and in your body and in your spirit that, man, that thing just oozes out of you wherever you go. And people can see it and feel it and people understand it. And so that is the that is the concept of what we're talking about. So let's look at our scripture over there. We're going to use a couple more, but I want to show you this with the Apostle Paul. Now, mind you, the Apostle Paul... He did write letters. He had letters that he had written, um, but he didn't have any set curriculum. He didn't have any set, you know, concept of discipleship. All he had was the Holy Spirit of God and the word of God that he had from the Old Testament and the knowledge of the things that he did conspire from going along with the disciples and the Lord Jesus Christ. But he knew what discipleship was. Now watch this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. He says, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherished her cherished cherishes her children. Now watch this. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have, watch this, impart unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our what? Say it our, own souls. our own souls because you would dare unto us. And Paul uses this. He says, guys, we, we invested our soul. We invested our life into those people. That's what discipleship really is. It's an investment of your life into the life of somebody else. It's an impartation when you are imparting your being into the very life of someone else. I want you to think about Jesus Christ just for a minute. He took the disciples through seven stages of spiritual development, seven stages of growth. And in that time, it took Jesus three years. 
But if you were to ask yourself, what exactly was Jesus doing with the disciples? You know what he was doing? He was weaving his life into their life. He was meshing his life, knitting his life into the life of the disciples where they became more like him. He was taking all of the essence of who God was and he was imparting that into the lives of the disciples. He was teaching them. But the bond and the relationship that they had built that was the process of discipleship. The process of discipleship is not walking somebody through 16 books and then bringing them through discipleship too. That is just the, the outline and the guideline that we use, but the process of it, it's the impartation of one's life into the life of somebody else. Now, the sad thing is, is that a lot of us, even as Christians, we say, Pastor Mike, how am I gonna do that? I don't have time to do that. And that, that is where the problems really do occur, is because you have to be willing to step up on the limb and to make those decisions in your life as a child of God. You have to be willing to step out on the limb and to say, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to put some time aside and I'm going to pour my life out and what Christ has poured into me, I'm going to pour that out into the life of somebody else. I'm going to invest what Christ has invested in me into the life of somebody else. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to take the energy. I'm going to take the love that Christ has poured out into my heart and into my life and and I'm going to pour that love out into the life of somebody else. I'm going to take the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and everything that Christ has given me. And I'm going to pour that into the life of somebody else. I'm going to take the compassion, the meekness, and the humbleness that Christ has given me. And I'm going to pour that into the life of somebody else. That is the process of discipleship. Discipleship has nothing to do with the outline and the curriculum even that we use. Discipleship is taking what Christ has done in you and it's you doing it in the very life of somebody else. Now here, once again, here comes the dilemma. If Christ hasn't done something in you, how can you take something that hasn't happened in you and invest it into the life of somebody else? So these are the concepts that we have to understand. And the word that Paul helped Paul words this is very significant because he says we didn't give you the gospel of God only but also our own souls we invested our life we invested our being we invested the depthness of who we are to you that's what real discipleship is and very few people have taken people and taken them from square one, gotten them saved, and walked them through the real process of discipleship. Because when you do that, those people that you disciple, those people that you invest in, into their life, and let me tell you something, they will become the dearest and closest people in your life. That is how God works. When you think about Jesus Christ, and he was with those disciples day in and day out. I mean, they were followers of Jesus Christ. They were what? Disciples. What does it mean? It means they were disciplined. It means they were learned. Listen, guys, those guys had to leave things behind to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And whosoever will save his life, the same shall what? Lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall what? He shall find it, save it. So we have to understand the process of discipleship. You, my friend, have to be willing to take time and energy and thought and care and concern what Christ has done in you and then invest it into the life of somebody else. That is true biblical discipleship. Discipleship is more than just coming to church. Discipleship is more than just showing up for Bible study. Discipleship is far, far more than walking through a set of catechisms and creeds and, and things that we look at. It's far, far beyond that. It's the impartation of your life and your soul into the life of somebody else. It's when you are taking everything that God has done in you and you are investing it into the life of somebody else. But if there's a disconnection from God to you, you can't impart that into the life of somebody else. Does everyone understand that? It, won't, it will not happen. That's why you have to be invested in the Word of God and the will of God and the Spirit of God and those fruits of the Spirit should be oozing out of your life so you can impart that into the very life of somebody else. Jesus Christ wove his life together with the disciples. Now think about this, because in the Old Testament, those of you who haven't gone through discipleship too, you'll learn this in discipleship too, but in the Old Testament, there are seven stages 
stages of spiritual growth. And the same with Jesus Christ. He walked the disciples through seven stages of spiritual growth. But Moses was the key individual taking the nation of Israel. And he gives us an example of a discipler. Somebody who is taking his life and he's investing it into the life of those people. And let me tell you something. Sometimes it's not easy, right? I mean, Moses had to deal with a lot of adversity, a lot of murmuring, complaining, a lot of conflict. He had to deal with all different types of things. But Moses stayed his course and he did what God had him to do. He walked those people and he brought those people. He was trying to get them into the promised land, but we know Moses failed and he didn't go into the promised land. But he, he meshed his life with the life of those people. That is what discipleship really is. So you as a Christian, you should be looking out around, all around you, and you should be thinking, how can I impart my soul and my being into the life of somebody else? What can I do to make a difference in this person's life? Whether it's a young boy, a young girl, whether it's an adult, no matter who it is, what can you do? How can you build a relationship with that person? And how can you impart what Christ has done in you to the life of someone else? Okay, so I want you to look at this. Now turn to the book of Philippians, right? Turn to the book of Philippians chapter 1. Now Paul is writing a letter, letter to the church at Philippi while he's in prison. And this is a very unique letter because watch what he says here. And, and once again, we can see the heart of Paul in his relationship with the people. Now remember, Paul started, mul he started multiple churches Okay, in, in Asia Minor, he would you see the route of Paul in the book of Acts. He went from city to city preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as he was doing that, he was establishing bonds and relationships with people. I mean, he was intertwining his life into their life. And the Apostle Paul had a Damascus Road experience where he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of God filled him with all of that God wanted to him to be filled with. And you know what he was doing? He was taking what God had did in his life. He was taking the revelation, the comprehension, the understanding. And what was he doing? He was imparting that into the very lives of other people. That is what discipleship really is. He was taking his vision, his understanding. He was taking the love. He was taking the grace, the compassion, and all that God had invested in him. And he was giving it to the other people. He was revealing it to them, not only by his actions, but by his demonstrations and his communication and everything that he did. Now look at this, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3. Philippians chapter 1, we'll pick it right up in verse 3. Paul says, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. He was thankful for the people. He was thankful for the relationships that he had built. He was always thankful for those people that God had brought into his life, that God had given him an opportunity to minister to. We should always be thankful for the people, no matter what they cause in our life. Amen. Now watch this. Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy. Now watch this. Mind you, Paul is in prison as he's writing this. <coughs> for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day day until now. He was thankful for the fellowship and the bond that he established. He was thankful for the relationships that he has established. He was thankful for the communion and the bond and the covenant that was shared between these people and him. And then he goes on, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very, of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's the rapture of the church. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all. Now watch what he says. Because I have you, say it out loud, in my heart. In my heart. Notice that. In so much as, as both in my bonds and in the defense of, in the confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. You see, Paul says, you guys are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, God is declaring this, God is my witness in this aspect. He says, how I greatly long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul is very clear on this. He says that, first of all, I have you in my heart. Those people were pressed upon Paul's heart. Paul thought about them all the time. Why? It's because he invested his soul and his life into those people. Let me tell you something. 
Praying for each other should be a natural reaction for you and me. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to think, oh, I forgot to pray for my brothers. No, they should be pressed upon your heart. When something is heavy on your heart, when something is weighing on your heart, when something is upon your heart, what do you do? You think about it all the time. It's a natural reaction because the church and the body of Christ that God has given to us, and as we form discipleship and as we go through this concept and these principles of discipleship, the people you disciple, you're thinking about them, you're praying about them. They are literally at the forefront of your mind and heart. There's that constant connection. There's that constant bond between you and them. One of the problems with us as Christians, we have this tendency to be disconnected. Okay, And the only time we feel connected is when we come to church on a Sunday. That ought not to be the case. You should be just as connected as as on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday as you are on a Sunday. Does everyone understand that? Because we need to be pressed upon each other's hearts where we're thinking about each other on a continual basis. Like Paul. Why? It's because we've invested our souls into the lives of each other. That is what real discipleship is. Mm. Sometimes our minds, would, let's face it, we have so many other burdens or, or stress upon our hearts. And then the next thing you know, we become disconnected from the body. We become disconnected from people. We become disconnected from God as well. Mm. And if you're disconnected from God as well, you're going to be disconnected from the body as well. Guys, this is so vitally important that you understand this because we have to be connected to God, drawing God's grace and his presence in our life, in his power in our life on a continual basis. That's why it's important to be in the word. That's why it's important to be amongst brethren and to be drawing strength, to be drawing wisdom, to be drawing compassion, to be drawing understanding constantly and continually from God. Why? It's because then we can empty that out into the very life of somebody else. This is the concept of discipleship. This is why it's so important that we understand these things. When Moses was in the wilderness with those people, millions of people, Moses is out there, and there were times when Moses was faced with all types of adversity and conflict and struggle. But you know what Moses did? Moses was burdened for the people. Do you remember at one point, how many guys remember God was going to destroy all the people? You guys remember that? And what did Moses do? He intervened for those people. God was going to, God was going to kill the people, and Moses is like, no, no, God, don't do that. And Moses, what was he doing? He was intervening for the people. Mm -hmm. We know that Moses is a type of Christ intervention for you and I, making intervention for you and I. But let me tell you something. Moses is a picture of a Christian who is constantly intervening for somebody that the Spirit of God will work in their lives and protect them and build them up and to bring them to the point or to the place where God wants to bring them. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what true discipleship is. Mm -hmm. Discipleship is coming alongside of somebody and walking them through life just like Jesus Christ did. He took those disciples and he taught them hand-on experience. That's what discipleship really is. He taught them the love. He taught them the wisdom. He taught them the understanding. He taught them how to live and move. He distributed the bread to the disciples. And what did he do? He says, give the bread out to the people. And they gave the bread out. You know what he was teaching them at that point? He was teaching them, guys, listen, it's great to be a servant. It's great to be a servant. When he washed those disciples' feet, you know what he was teaching them? He was teaching them to take upon themselves the form of a servant as well. So these are the things we have to understand. Now, Paul says there that he's talking about, he says, I have you in my heart. That is a heavy statement that Paul makes. Those people were pressed upon his heart daily. They were a part of his being. They were a part of his soul. He was so intertwined with them that he was continually thinking about them. And here he is writing a letter to the church at Philippi. And then he says, in so much as both in my bonds, right? Now, he, obviously he was in chains. He was in prison. And in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, ye are partakers of my grace. Paul say, you guys are partaking in the grace of God that was poured about on me. He, Paul took what God had given him and he invested it into the life of other people. Now guys, here's the thing. We have to go to God and get what we need from God and then we can go and then we can invest that into the very life of somebody else. That is what discipleship is all about. Very few Christians will ever see this or experience it and it's a sad point 
It really is. It's a very sad point because so many Christians, they think discipleship is just, you know, maybe sending somebody a scripture or calling them up. It goes so much deeper. And I really want you to understand this because it's important that you find somebody in your life that you can disciple, that you can walk through this, these principles and concepts that we're talking about. And then Paul says in verse 8, For God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Now he's talking about the, the bowels, the inner feeling, the inner emotion. He says, I long for you, not in his own bowels, but in the bowels of who? In the bowels of Jesus Christ. Because Paul's life was connected to Jesus Christ. Listen, guys, you know what discipleship is? Jesus Christ, we should be feeling what God feels. Okay, And as we feel what God feels, we should be imparting that into the life of somebody else so they can feel what God feels. You know, so you got, let's face it, let's be for real. We're all Christians here. Yeah? You guys know when you get disconnected to God, you don't feel anything. Let's, right? The Bible says, who being past what? Feeling. Feeling, right? We know that. You get to the point where you just want to sit back, watch TV, you click through the channels, and not talk to anybody, not get involved in anyone's life. And as a matter of fact, people become a nuisance to you, right? When you, you guys, let's be for real, right? And, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit starts to move in you. You start to think about somebody going through some struggles, and you start to feel that person's pain. And you're bearing one another's burdens. And you feel what that person's going through. Because why? Because they're on your heart. And you are literally, both of you are in the very bowels of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Guys, th this stuff is, is so basic, but yet it's a part of Christianity, I believe, that is missing in a lot of areas. We just come to church and we think, well, we're doing this. We go through the 16 books and we go, cool, I did that. We go through discipleship too. We go, good, I did that. And we chalk it up, chalk it up, and that's the end of it. That's not, the guys, that's not the end. That's the beginning of it. Do you understand that? That is literally the beginning. You go through discipleship one. There's the bond that is formed between you and that individual. They get into discipleship two. Now, by the time you get all the information and the knowledge from the Word of God, how to study the Word of God, but by the time you get to the end of that, where it's talking about your spiritual gifts, your spiritual abilities, then you take those things that you've learned from there, and then you impart them into the body of Christ. Listen, those booklets are nothing more than a curriculum to put you on the right track. But the impartation of, and the application, that's where life begins. That's where it has to begin. It's not just going through these things, you know, and that's what happens. We go through it. I did that. I did that. Okay. Now I'm sitting here doing nothing. No, no, no. That is the beginning to put you in somewhere where God could do something in your life. Okay. Now. Let's turn to the Old Testament. I'm going to give you a, a, a biblical principle that I believe is a real concept of discipleship. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Now, out of everything that I just said with Jesus Christ, Moses, and, and the Apostle Paul, keep those three characters in the back of your mind. And as we come to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 1, we have a unique relationship between Jonathan and David. Very unique relationship between the two. Jonathan and David were just, I mean, the, the bond and the relationship that they possessed, it suppressed any other relationship in the Bible. If you were to look at verse 1, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan, say that word out loud, was what? It was knit with the soul of David. Now, it, it's funny the word it, that the Bible uses this word, knit, okay? Um, I, actually, I, I went to visit Jean Krogan, and um, Juliet was there, and she was knitting. And she was showing me how to do it, and she was showing me. And I thought about it, and I'm like, knit, hmm, that's a funny word. Listen to what this word means, right? It means to link firmly and closely. There's one. It means to cause to grow together. Mm. To cause to grow together. Listen to this one, right? It, it, it means to uh, uh, it means to contradict. Uh, it means to contradict and to take out wrinkles. All right. Also, it means to form an, by interlocking. It means to form by interlocking. Okay. And and so now we look at this word, right? To to link firmly or closely. To cause to grow together. It means to be meshed together. That's what the word means. 
Okay? Now, I want you to see this because I believe that this is a real process of biblical discipleship in the life of Jonathan and David. We know that David is a type of Christ in the, in the Word of God, and I believe that this is the bond that people need to possess with each other, where your life is literally knit and woven together with the life of somebody else. That is what discipleship is. Jesus took his life, and he knitted his life into those 12 apostles, 11 apostles. He knitted his life into their life. You think about the Apostle Paul. You know what he did? He knitted his life into the people that he was ministering to. He wove his life so deeply into theirs that they were intertwined, that they became one. Why do you think the Bible constantly talks about the body of Christ becoming what? One. Do you guys know that in Ephesians it talks about one? We're constantly, we're seeing this unification. But this unification and this bond is drawn together through what? Charity. And that's why the Bible calls charity the bond of what? The bond of perfectness. In, in Colossians chapter 3, it talks about bond, the bond of perfectness. And that is what links things together. And when you look at the life of Jonathan, and you look at the life of David, and you, you have a beautiful experience in, of what discipleship really is all about. It's you taking your life and somebody else's life, and that life being knit together where it cannot come undone. That's what discipleship really is. I mean, look how this is worded, right? Worded again. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan, look at this, was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan, say it out loud, you can say it out loud, Jonathan what? He loved him as his own soul. That's the bond of discipleship, guys. That's the connection. It says he loved him as his own soul. Now, here's, here's another thing. Let's just look at this historically speaking, okay? David, everyone knew that David was to anointed to be king. Jonathan had no reason right. whatsoever to love David. Do you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saul hated David because Saul was so mad at Jonathan for loving David because Saul knew that David was next in line to be king, but he wanted his own son, Jonathan, to be king. Because the Bible says love isn't jealous, right? Mm -hmm. You think about that. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, John, hey, Jonathan, he could have done, had, he could have linked up with his father and had David killed, and he was next in line to be king. Right. He wasn't thinking that way. Amen. He was thinking in a godly fashion. Now watch this, right? So it was knit with their soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Jonathan had such a love for David. It was like this, this, this burden that he constantly had for him. Now, I love the story. If you guys know the rest of the story, when Jonathan died, David was weeping and weeping and weeping for Jonathan. You remember the story? And then later on, Jonathan has a son, Mephibosheth, who's, who's literally crippled. And that was Jonathan's son. And David took him in and he loved him. See what discipleship does, guys? Mm -hmm. It builds a connection in the lives of people. Mm -hmm. That's what real discipleship is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we come to church on a Sunday, and some of us are like, all right, see you next week, boom, and that's it. There's nothing there. There's no impartation of life. There's no impartation of soul. There's no impartation of being. There's nothing being what? Knit together, meshed together. You, as an individual in this church, you've got to find somehow, some way where your life is being intertwined in the life of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somehow that your life and their life is being knitted together mm -hmm. in a close fashion. Now look at what look at happens here, right? This is awesome, guys. You've got to understand this story here. Okay? Now watch what it says, right? So it says, Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now watch this. And Saul took him that day and would and would and, uh, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Now, Saul had a, a love hatred relationship for David, and then his jealousy came in, the evil spirit came upon him, then he wanted to kill him. But look at verse three. Then Jonathan and David, they made a covenant. Notice this, right? They made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And you gotta understand what's happening here. And Jonathan stripped himself of his robe that was upon him. <coughs> now Historically speaking, Jonathan would have a special role because he was the what? King's son. He was the king's son. 
Jonathan is surrendering everything to David. He's Amen. saying, I am acknowledging that you are above me. Did you guys get that? Mm -hmm. Guys, that's what discipleship is. Mm -hmm. Jonathan was to be king and have absolute power and rule. Jonathan relinquished everything he had because of the bond and the covenant that he had with David. That's what discipleship is, guys. It's literally, it's the impartation of one's life into the life of somebody else. Then Jonathan, he made a covenant. There's the bond. There's the covenant, the relationship. Because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was, that was upon him. And he gave it to David. And his garments, even, look at this, even to his sword mm. and his bow and to his girdle. Mm. He gives him his sword. <clears throat> he gives him his bow. Now that sword was a picture of his defense. It was his weapon. It was a special sword as well as his bow and his girdle. Jonathan is literally relinquishing everything he can. And at this point, him and David's life were knitted together. That is discipleship. We come to church. Praise God you come to church. Praise God we do the things that we do. Thank God for discipleship one, discipleship two. But guys, that is nothing more than the beginning of what discipleship is. We, each and every one of you, you should be looking for somebody in this church that you can weave your life together with. Mm -hmm. That you can be knitted together in body, in soul, and in spirit. Mm -hmm. That is what discipleship mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Discipleship is not showing up on a Wednesday night Bible study. That has very little to do with anything. Discipleship has nothing to do with your church attendance on a Sunday morning. That has nothing to do with it. We're called to be disciples, and the Bible has given us illustration after illustration after illustration about what discipleship really is. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, Pastor Mike, I don't have time to do that. I don't have the desire to do that. Absolutely, you don't. You don't have the time, nor do you have the desire. It's Christ in you that gives you the desire. We're to work out our salvation with what? Fear and trembling, right? For it is Christ that worketh what? In us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You don't want to do this naturally. <clears throat> you don't want to do that. You know what your flesh wants to do after it gets home from work? It wants to sit on that couch. <laughs> you better get off of it. You know what your flesh wants to do? It wants to be bitter and irritated and frustrated with all the people that are around you. That's what that flesh wants to do. Yeah. Hey man, we know that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? It's weak. We know that these two are what? Contrary one to another so that you can not do the things that you are. Right. Yeah. But you've got to make up your mind and you've got to invest yourself into the life of Christ first and foremost mm -hmm. where Christ is emptying himself out upon you and that you have no other choice but to take what he's doing in you and to give it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what discipleship really is. Yeah. But if there ain't nothing going on here between you and God, mm -hmm. there isn't going to be anything going on here between you and people. You'll be as cold as a as a dead salmon in Alaska. Hey, let's be for real. That's how a lot of God's people are. They even hear a message like this and they're like, man, my pastor Mike's taking this thing too far. No, no, no. We have illustration after illustration in the word of God. Jesus Christ is our great example. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be followers of Christ. Paul says, be ye what? Followers of me, as I also am a what? A follower of Christ. We have example after example in the word of God of what discipleship really is. If you're not doing discipleship one, I urge you to get involved in it and then go through. If you haven't done discipleship two, I urge you to go through it. If you've gone through it, but you're not implementing what you've learned, I urge you to go through it again. Because if not, you're missing the boat. I'm going to be preaching a message at, uh, at, at 11 o'clock. And the title of it is, it don't, don't miss your calling. 
And I'm going to prove to you that a lot of Christians not only have missed the boat and missed the calling, but they haven't even given ear to God. No response to the spirit or to the will or to the work of God whatsoever in their life. They come to church, but the word of God every Sunday morning just bounces off. Boom. Like a ping pong ball across a hard cement wall. Just bounces off. No penetration. No penetration. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word, not what? Here is only what? Deceiving your own selves. A lot of things we need to look into. But my question is to you, who are you discipling? Mm -hmm. Whose life has, you, has your life been knitted together with? Mm -hmm. How are you trying to form that bond? Whose life are you taking your life and dumping it out into the life of somebody else? Are you going to Christ and receiving his love, his grace, his wisdom, his his, 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 his passion, all of his attributes, and then dumping that out into the life of somebody else. That's what discipleship really is. Let's pray, guys. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. Pray that people can just really begin to understand this, this concept of discipleship, Lord. Lord, sometimes it's, it's just the little things that we can do to demonstrate your love, your grace, your compassion, your understanding, your wisdom. Sometimes just little things go a long way. But I pray, God, that each and every one of us will be looking for somebody, a soul to save, and then a soul to be knitted together with our soul. Lord, I just pray that you would fill us, Lord, with your love, your grace, and your wisdom as you did the Apostle Paul yes. as a great example. He didn't only impart the gospel. He just didn't witness to people. He just didn't tell people about Jesus. But he imparted his own soul to the lives of those people that he ministered to. And I think about the bond that he with people and I pray that we can do the same that you would enable us to be filled with your fruit of your spirit Lord yes. love, joy, peace, gentleness kindness, meekness, faith, temperance Lord just fill us with your spirit and the fruit of the spirit help us Lord to be willing to put the time aside help us Lord not to be selfish disconnected but I pray that you would press people upon our hearts. Mm -hmm. That your love would be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And that we can literally demonstrate the love of Christ everywhere we go. And that people will come to an understanding of who you are yes. through our life, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you've done. <clears throat> We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.